Hi everyone, my name is Mia Falstein Rush. I am the shorts programmer here at the Melbourne International Film Festival. We are coming to you from Mountain Goat Brewery this evening, one of our sponsors for the Shorts Awards. We're lucky enough to have all five winners of the Shorts Awards with us this evening, coming live across the globe. We have Nevena Desavoyevich, winner of Black Magic Design Award for Best Cinematography for Outside the Oranges Are Blooming. Elodie Demanche, winner of HP and Storm FX Award for Best Animation Short Film for Ines. Eva Maggie, winner of Abercrombie and Kent Award for Best Documentary Short Film for The Weight of All the Beauty. We have John Bell, winner of Film Victoria Owen Rado Award for Best Australian Short Film for The Magai. And we have director Anthony Inti and producer Chingiz Karabekov, winner of City of Melbourne Grand Prix for Best Short Film for Dayi. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. It's really fantastic to have you all here. I know you're all kind of beaming in from across the globe, so I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Anthony and Chingiz, I really wanted to start with you guys. Obviously, you've, you've won the Grand Prix. You've also come fresh from a couple of months ago, fresh from winning the Grand Prix at, at Claremont Ferrand, so congratulations there as well. You've managed to um, really capture the, the child performances so well. Um, Matilda Enchil has actually been gifted um, a special jury award, uh, which is, was not at all planned, um, but the jury just felt so strongly about her performance. So she's, she's received an outstanding performance award um, from them, which is so generous of them as well. Um, I wanted to ask you about how you came to the story um, and what it was like working with two children as, as the principal actors for this film. Thank you for the for the kind words. Uh, I'm still kind of like trying to let it all sink in, um, but uh, it's actually um, uh, like a, a bit based on, on on my life story when I was a, a kid. Um, and uh, you know, by the way, Chingis is also the co co writer of the project, and we've been working together from from the start. Um, and uh, so I kind of had like a small idea of, of, of this story and we, we we were already thinking about it in 2015 but it was a bit too ambitious uh, and we couldn't get it financed and um, we were like you know what let's just write it <laughs> let's just start by writing it and uh, we kind of like went back into our youth also Chingis and me we, we, we both of us didn't grow up in, in Europe. I, 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 I was born in Ghana, I lived there, and Chingis was born in Kazakhstan. So we kind of like went back to our youth and, and we, we depicted, you know, stories and, and it became Daye. And, uh, and then the second part was like uh, trying to get it financed, uh, which didn't work out. So we kind of like figured it out ourselves and, and, and favors from people. And then, um, and that's how kind of like Daye started. It's like a really, it's a passion project. Um, you know, my dad was producing it too, you know, uh, my, my family, my nieces, it was like a family film. So what he's doing right now is like, we, we still don't understand what's happening. Um, but the, when, when, when I heard like Matilda, um, was gonna get the award too. That's that. That really was like you know. It really touched us so much because the funny story is that the the story was written for two boys actually, and um, but you know we did an audition and everybody was welcome. We just did a an audition at a regular um, primary school, and um, everybody was welcome and uh, and. Yeah, we just had like the characteristics written down and this girl walks in, Matilda, and uh, she's like, <laughs> she was supposed to play me when I was a kid. And she was even better than, than me when I was a kid. So <laughs> it was like, it kind of like made sense. Like she walked in and she, we were like, wow, um, okay, this is it. Like, this is it. And, and, and she just played the character. And um, so that's, that's how it, it evolved. Um, you know, me working with kids, I've always worked with kids because I kind of like feel like I'm a kid myself also. Uh, and, uh, you know, kids are super pure and they are really honest. And I learned a lot from kids because, uh, I, you know, the way of 
communicating as a director uh, is something that I really learned from 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 kids and um, so yeah working with kids it, it feels it feels very natural um, for, 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 for for us yeah James you want to add something to it I think you covered it <laughs> uh, but also thank you again for the for the award and for the jury prize for Matilda it's amazing very exciting to have such a talent at such a young age. So I, I can see her going on to amazing things for sure. Eva and Nev Nevena, I wanted to um, talk to you both. I think a lot of uh, documentaries often compromise on the beauty of, of the image and the poetry of the, of, you know, the visual language that we're all working with here. Um, but your, your two films absolutely do not compromise on this aspect. Um, they're both so beautiful. Every frame is, is a painting. It's just, um, you've both really managed to capture the mood um, of your scenes so well. I wanted to ask you both um, how, how you captured that beauty and, and why it was so important to the individual stories you were telling. Difficult to answer, I guess. It's just my style of uh, making documentaries because I'm very visual. And um, uh, my film is about alcoholism and people drinking themselves to death. So it would be easy just to judge them. But uh, my aim as a filmmaker is to make these stories beautiful and tell them in a poetical way, just to maybe to show the audience that actually we can, we can uh, not just judge these people, but we should rather try to see them as beautiful people suffering the bittersweet life they're going through. So I don't know if it answers the question, but I guess it's just my my style of making documentaries. I, I'm, I don't like to observe and just film documentaries in a TV style. So it's, it's very important to make it very visual, poetical, and also music plays a great role in my, in my films. For me, it was uh, very important to uh, interpret the landscape uh, as an equal character uh, in this film. Uh, since I on, only had 20 minutes to just transmit this experience that I had there, uh, I also tried to, to introduce the landscape and the photography uh, as, a, let's say, a, a character in the film. So. I try to, to frame, that each frame tells us and guides us uh, through, through the story and adds something uh, and not just a pure yeah, l landscape uh, painting that, um, that just happened to be, to be there. So for me, it was really determining this, um, this thing of the, um, of the nature as um, as an equal character um, to describe the, the human state. Elodie, I wanted to talk about also the beauty within your animation. You know, the way the ink bleeds um, over the fine lines, and you've really captured the stillness um, in the moment um, of the film. I've seen you uh, have an interview elsewhere where you talk about um, the filming process and not just filming the animation itself, but actually filming the, the voice actors. Um, and you kind of described it in a way that was like it's a, in a documentary style. Um, can you talk about how documentary style of capturing the voices informed and complemented the story itself? I don't know how I started to do in that way, but uh, I guess I was really interested first uh, to do documentary, actually. So I wanted to really film and, uh, and record uh, things and make movie from live action. But I was really bad with cameras. <laughs> so um, sadly, my first movie, I recorded uh, like in live action, but I wasn't satisfied about the picture. So because I'm drawing a lot and because I'm first an illustrator, I tried at some point to, to illustrate what I wanted the, the actress to do. And uh, like that, I put my vision in the picture and after the voice was recorded uh, like uh, in live. So I 
think I'm really sensitive about documentary and also voice and reality and I think it adds something to to the animation and I think animation is cinema and actually it's the same it's just yes we don't use the same material so uh, the sound is super important and gives that touch that gives rea realism to, to the movie. Yeah, it's very naturalistic, the conversation she's having and um, yeah, it really shone through. John, I wanted to move to you and talk about, you know, in the same way that Elodie examines, you know, quite a, an, a common experience for people um, who you know perhaps get pregnant and have the decision to to perhaps terminate? You know, while John, your film you know, very much centres on the kind of in, intergenerational traumas that First Nations people here in Australia experience as um, as a result of ongoing impacts of colonisation, you also have a, a a very big part of the film is is looking at postpartum depression, um, and I wanted to ask you about. Um, how you kind of came to horror um, as a way to explore both of these very kind of real and devastating topics. Horror, horror seemed like the appropriate genre because, well, I mean, horror is the genre, but I guess I'd maybe call it a terror, like horror sometimes being after the fact and, and sort of it was almost like... Um, like the terror of the government taking your children so that you can't reproduce, um, the 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 exploring sort of the lead up to that, and then just we just sort of touch on it at the end where where the monster gets the child. Um, uh, it's sort of that that the slow sinking realization that you as much as you, you, you want to do something, it's inevitable. As much as you, you, you think you may have power, the system um, that exploits you, uh, the system that um, just lays down on you with all its weight, it's almost inevitable that the system will beat you. And that that feels like it's a story that belongs in a horror genre. If you take that story and put it in a drama, people feel like it's too heavy. But if you see it in the horror genre, in, in the horror genre, then <clears throat> then people definitely feel like it's um, uh, it's just it's just the way the genre works. You know, like um, uh, when you get down to uh, there's often. Um, a monster that's like super the supernatural that's the same as the system that's the same as the government it just doesn't let up it just follows and follows until it gets what it wants and also you know back to also the the kind of postpartum depression and exploring that you know do you see that as in kind of intri intrinsically linked to colonization trauma kind of seems to it can embed itself into into a world view and then it really affects how one might parent their child and then you don't even know that you're doing things but you're sort of giving your children biases towards or, or away from something and they don't really <clears throat> on some level they don't really get to think for themselves and so it's almost like depression or, or um, marginalization becomes a tradition a family tradition a family it's sort of embedded in the culture and some of that stuff um it, it, I, I think that uh, a lot of there's still a lot of fear for aboriginal women uh, and aboriginal families in australia around even just going to have their baby at a hospital um maybe i should just do this at home and not let anybody or not let the government know about it yeah it's a really potent work and I think all of that comes through. Yeah, I think that palatability comes from the genre. Like there's certain expectations you have in a horror genre that lends itself to this kind of story. I see a, a real interesting link between um, Daye and 
The Magai. Um, I think both of, both of these films really examine, I guess, the innocence of children and these kind of malignant forces or insidious forces that corrupt Anthony and Ching is, I wanted to understand, I mean, you, you spoke about, you've spoken already about how, you know, this is very close to your childhood, but I wanted to understand in the places that you both grew up in, is this sort of quite a common story? Um, and I also wanted to um, understand the reasoning behind why you decided to basically end the film on a positive note. The loss of innocence was something that we really, or in the sense, like the innocence of these kids was something that we really um, um, start with um, going into writing this story um, because Anthony, you know, we were, Anthony and me were always kind of like discussing like our childhoods together and we both grew up in different countries. And like these experiences we had, and Anthony had like this very um, interesting story about um, going to this place where he shouldn't have been. And he was quite young, and it was something that kind of like sparked our imagination because it's a universal feeling, you know, being young and at a place where you're not supposed to be. And it's something that, you know, spoke to me as well, because I kind of very much relate to that experience of not being where you're, oh, being where you're not supposed to be as a child. And at the same time, it, there's this thing where, you know, we, I guess we got out of it okay, but it could have gone wrong. It could have gone very wrong. And I think, you know, we, we, we knew that at the end of our story, we would, you know, it's not so much of a happy ending in the sense that um, this, this is what they, what they've gone through wasn't particularly <laughs> very, you know, um, happy or something, but they've, but they've gone through something and they've experienced something and it's something that, you know, they take with them at the end of the story. Right. Anthony, am I saying this right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most deaf. Um, no. And also like for us, uh, the, the, what was the challenge for us was actually we we wanted to we wanted the audience to to fear you know for for what whatever may happen but at the same time how we introduce our characters uh for example matilda um i kind of i can i kind of feel like we already told the audience like she's going to be all right you know like <laughs> um so Maybe that's the spoiler, but um, in the sense of like, we just wanted to, to build the tension because when we were in that situation, we didn't kind of like see the danger because you're young and you're like naive and you are in that moment and you, you are being appreciated by, by older people and, and you feel cool, you know, and, and, and you, don't, you don't understand the, the, the danger or, or the environment that you are in um, until like, until it becomes very explicit, obviously. Uh, but me, uh, we, 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 we kind of like, we are here, we, we are zooming, so we made it. <laughs> so we didn't feel like the film had to, had to be negative, you know? Um, in, we, we, are, we are positive people in life and we believe like you take your experience and you, you grow out of it, you know? And, and we just wanted the, the audience to fear, but um, you know, it, because it was based on our personal things, we came out of it okay. But it could have went wrong, obviously. But for these two characters, it, it went okay. And and that was the reason why it had to like end on a positive note. Uh, I mean, on that note, actually. I mean, obviously we've talked about these two films that are, are 
dealing with very serious issues, but you know, not to scare anyone off, but all, actually all five films deal with very kind of serious issues. I wanted um, Elodie and Nevena and Eva, I wanted you three to talk about, um, you know, if, if the stories, uh, you know, come from like a very personal place for you or was it a chance connection perhaps with the subjects that led you to these stories? Maybe Elodie, you want to start? So, yeah, it comes from a personal story uh, because I've been through um, an abortion. So, but when I was into the situation, uh, I was really hesitating. So it's not my story. The movie is not my story. But uh, I felt that I miss a representation about that moment because I was young and I was feeling lost and I didn't really know what to do. And also all the, um, all the images and all the books that I wrote about it, all the movies that I watched uh, about it uh, gave to me like uh, a vision of that, like super bad and uh, super guilty and um, yeah, so I was feeling really uncomfortable to do it. And when I did it, actually, it was not that that bad. I mean, uh, uh, the bad thing was the judgment about people from outside and the representation about the subject that, that didn't exist a lot. I mean, I, uh, I never watched a movie talking about that in a positive way, because, of course, it's something that can be difficult to live. But yeah, it, it's OK. And yeah, so I promised to myself at that moment in my life that at some point in my life, I, I will try to make something from that. Uh, yeah, just to let people know that it's okay. Uh, you, you, you can do it and you, and you can be happy about your choice. Yeah, so it's from a personal story, even if it's not completely my story. And uh, Eva? My, my film is also based on a very personal story because actually the main characters in my films are my father and my uncles. And it was in 2014 when I received the news that my uncle was murdered there in this village. And then I went there to, actually I spent my childhood, childhood there. It's, uh, my grandmother and grandfather lived there. And, but I hadn't been there for, for around 10 years. And when I received this news about the murder, then I went uh, there to investigate that what's actually happening there. And when I got there, there was only one person alive. <laughs> it was our neighbor. And first I thought I'll make a film about him. Uh, but during shooting, he also died. He drank himself to death as well. So uh, then I walked around in the village. It's, there's nobody there anymore. And somehow I, I had a feeling that I, I felt all the beauty there. It's, very, it's a very beautiful place. Uh, and, and I understood that actually it's not just alcoholism. It's just that they were so lonely there and they need, needed some entertainment. That's why they started drinking. And that's how I combined the true story with my fantasies. And then I made this film about vodka devil or bottle demon just hanging or floating around in this village and entertaining these these people there and just making them to drink them drink themselves to death so it's it's a personal story uh, mixed with with fantasies i think nevena your your story also deals with the loneliness of a man too there's a lot of yes. connection there yes it's funny yeah that uh, our films uh, because i saw also eva's film at top leipzig so uh and we were there together so i i, I didn't recognize eva immediately uh so uh yes my film also has uh, kind of a personal background uh it's a memory on my village in serbia uh, where I spent the most of my childhood and um, I remember there that the villagers um, share the same let's say misfortune as the villagers from the, the um, small village in the northern region of Portugal 
uh, it's that somebody among them is uh, stealing. And, um, and when I read uh, in the news newspaper an article about this, um, for us, anecdote, and for them, it was a really big deal and, and a drama and, um, and the tragedy of the village. I, I remembered of, uh, of my grandma and uh, I remember of the, of the days uh, that I spent in my own village and uh, they also deal with the same situation. So I immediately went to, to, meet, uh, to meet those people and to see the, the village. Uh, and there I met uh, the lonely, the lonely man, uh, and we kind of uh, be became um, two strangers in the in the same city, in the same place. Um, and um, then it also became a little bit of the personal story, in a way how I was dealing uh, uh, for uh, with the loneliness in the in the in the abroad during my studies. Uh, then afterwards, when I um, tried to stay, to uh, and um, so yeah, it's it's a mixture between the memory, uh, nostalgia for uh, for my childhood days and the stories from my childhood, and something that um, was uh, connected to my not so recent, but uh, yeah, recent uh, past. So that is how it all began. <laughs> I really wanted to thank you all for, for joining us today and we're really looking forward to seeing more works from you. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.